Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Andrea and I have been selling on Etsy for eight years. I have had an embroidery business for most of those eight years, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And yeah, that's what I do. I have been doing embroidery since I was in high school. So this video, we are going to be talking about how much does it cost to start a home embroidery business? Okay, so I want to rewind and start with my story. Like I said, I have been selling on Etsy for eight years. I actually started my business with a Silhouette Cameo. Um, I think those are still around. Maybe they're not. I know like, they're like the die cutting machines where you could like cut out vinyl and then iron on the thing, like a Cricut or a Silhouette. I had a Silhouette. And I started my business whenever monograms were like all the rage. Um, and so I, just did that. I loved them. I loved monograms just in my own life. And so I had a silhouette. I was making just iron on t-shirts for myself. And I thought, you know what? I could totally sell these on Etsy. Um, Etsy was like a new thing, but I don't even know how long Etsy has been around, but it was like not the platform it is today, which is really interesting. But I was like, I could sell these on Etsy. And so I did. And then it took like I think two complaints, I did not have very thick skin at all at the time, of someone being like, hey, I thought this was gonna be embroidery, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna switch to embroidery. That's what I'm gonna do. And so what I did was I started my shop in August, I went through Christmas orders making, um, the iron-on vinyl machines, and then from the combo of what I made during that season of selling like the four months that I had made and Christmas money, I bought my first household embroidery machine and switched over to embroidery. I had no sewing experience. I had never embroidered in my life, which um, now that I have both sewing experience and embroidery experience, I can tell you that if you're watching this thinking, oh, but she probably sewed before, the only crossover between embroidery and sewing is the way you thread the machine. There is nothing else is similar about it. It's completely different other than the way you thread the machine and then thread the bobbin. But I digress. I learned how to embroider. I had no idea what I was doing. I taught, got taught at a local sewing shop. And yeah, that is how I got started into embroidery. So if you're watching this thinking like, oh, I can't do it. I don't know how. Neither did I. So <laughs> Welcome to the show. I did not know how to embroider in any way before I literally decided to start an embroidery business. I had never threaded a needle in my life. So here we are eight years later, obviously I know how to embroider now. Um, I learned pretty quickly because I had to because I had orders open. And yeah, that is what I did. So obviously we're gonna go back to you now. You're wondering how much does it cost to start a home embroidery business? You're not wondering about my story, but I just figured I would share that as a little bit of encouragement to you guys that I was completely clueless when I started. Um, and yeah, I started with a household machine. So we're going to be talking through some of the routes that you can go with embroidery. Um, there are a lot of different routes and machines accordingly. The bulk cost of starting an embroidery business at home, in my opinion, is the machine, um, just because the machines can be a little bit pricey. Um, and there's not as much, like depending on where you want to start as far as if you want to start with like a website or Etsy or blah, 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 all those hosting fees are different, um, but the, I think in, in my opinion for actually starting a home, home-based embroidery business, obviously if you were gonna go somewhere else, the, the most expensive thing would be the space itself. But if for starting a home-based embroidery business, likely you are going to be investing most of your money into the machine, and so we are gonna be talking about machines, options that you have, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so basically we are going to be talking about three different categories of machines, I guess technically four, but three different categories of machines. I will be sharing with you what we have, what I started with, what we added, um, and why. Um, and yeah, so the first thing that you can get is a single needle machine, just like a hobby household machine. I think technically all of my machines that I have are considered household machines, like none of them are commercial. Um, so you can get a single needle machine, a six needle machine, or like a commercial 20 needle machine. It really, really depends on what 
you want to sell. So before you start and make a decision on your machine, you definitely need to be deciding what you are going to be doing the most of. So um, just, I will tell you outright right now, and I've gotten questions about this on my YouTube channel before, we only have single needle machines. We only have machines that can sew one thread color at a time. Um, and that was done because we don't need much more than a single needle machine. Very rarely are we doing two or three color thread designs, like thread color designs. Um, because we just don't, that's not our niche. Our niche is monograms and we purposefully avoid, we could definitely use, um, a six needle and use, um, like two color designs. We could definitely list some, but we intentionally do not because we have single needle machines and that's because single needle are the cheapest. So if you are going to be doing something like us, like personalized items with mostly one thread color, or you can get away with mostly one thread color, you will want to be looking at the single needle machine category. There are two machines within the single machine category. I'm gonna be breaking them down later because I know the most about single needle machines because that's what I have. If you are going to be doing routinely doing designs that are two thread colors, three thread colors, or up to six thread colors, you might want to get a six needle machine. And then if you are going to be doing like a lot of thread colors, a lot of volume, jerseys, like jerseys for sports teams, local business, big orders, you may wanna look into a commercial 20 needle machine. I honestly don't know anything about those. Um, I know that they get Ex insanely pricey. I would think that like a starting price would be like $20,000. I have no idea. I know they are very, very expensive. I priced out 16 needle machines for our shop before and decided they were too expensive for us. And so I've never even looked into a 20 needle or a commercial machine um, because they are very, very pricey. But if you are trying to start a business where you are going expecting a lot of volume, it might be worth it for you to invest in that machine. So that is 20 needles. When we move on to six needle machines, I will think, I would think obviously all of this is a big range. I'm just trying to give you guys a ballpark figure of what I would expect to pay if I was buying a six needle machine. I would expect to pay at least $5,000 and up to $12,000, maybe less. I would think you can find a decent used six needle machine for around $5,000. And um, if you were to walk into a sewing shop and say, hi, I need a six needle machine and get a brand new one with like everything that you needed, you'd probably pay around 10 and maybe 12 for some upgrades of like hoop size and stuff like that. Um, so again, you really need to know your niche before you decide to make that sort of investment because obviously that is a very large amount of money to invest in one machine. Um, and the only caveat or the only thing I will say about used machines is make sure that you test them because I know that like we have machines and I feel like people who have machine embroidery always will tell you that like if you have eight machines, it's because one's always breaking and it's because they just do like they wear out pretty easily. Maybe that's only because maybe that's because I have household machines and not commercial. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to test it and make sure that it still has a good amount of life left in it before you buy a used machine. I would do the same thing. And I still, I've actually never bought a used machine. I've always bought new from my sewing machine guy. I, he taught me how to sew, which I'm gonna talk about next. And I have bought now probably over 10 machines from him throughout the course of my business. So anyways, let's move on to single needles. So I have a lot to say about single needles because this is what the, I know most about. I currently run eight single needle machines in our shop, three with an arm, five without. I will explain all of that, but just know that we run eight machines. Um, right now, one's down, of course, but when all, f all five small machines are ready, none of our big, very rarely do our big machines go down. But we have the ability to run, when we're running at full capacity, eight machines at one time. So like I mentioned, when I started my business, um, I just went into a local sewing shop and bought whatever the guy sold me. It was eight over eight years ago now. Um, and so this was not, I'm trying to explain it to someone, like 
online research, even though the internet has not changed a lot in eight years, eight years is long enough to have made the culture around online research become a way bigger thing. Like you didn't do that. Like people ask me sometimes like, what did you research before you started your shop? I was like, literally nothing. That wasn't a thing. You didn't read reviews online. There weren't like product review videos. If there were, they were few and far between. And there certainly weren't many for machine embroidery. So you just went into the store and bought what the guy told you to buy. That was kind of like what you did. It was not like it is today when it comes to like researching things online before you go. And so I literally just went to that shop and I have been buying machines from him literally ever since I've bought over 10, like I said. Okay, so I use one more thing before we start actually breaking down. I use all Brother machines. I've never used anything else. The guy that I go to is a Brother dealer, and so I use Brother. It's what I do. Um, I don't know a ton about other options besides the ones that I use. I have two different kinds of machines. I have five machines that do not have an arm and three machines that do, that do have an arm. I started with the machines that do not have an arm. So I started with one of those and then added, added them throughout time. I would do the exact same thing again, but yeah, I now have five without an arm three with, and I didn't add a machine with an arm until several years in, and by an arm, I will put up a picture of, of two machines next to each other and point to the ones that have an arm and the one that doesn't. But basically, they are much pricier. Um, we call them the big machine versus small machine. So the big machines are the ones with the arms. The ones without an arm are called small machines. That's how we like sort them in, in whenever we're working. But the ones with arms are much, much pricier than the ones without. And so that is why I have five without. And also the, still the bulk, the large majority of the items that we s ship out from our shop are made on the small machines. They are still definitely the, the machines that we use the most and it's not close. So the reason that we decided to add big machines several years into our business is that you can offer more products with them. And so this is where we're actually gonna get down to actually talking about the nitty gritty of machines and what you might need. So I'm assuming if you're still watching this video, you have more or less eliminated six needle and 20 needle and you are interested in single needles because that is what we are, are talking about. And so what you can make on each of them is quite different. Um, what the arm provides you is basically the ability to make bags because you can just hook on the item and not sew through the bottom, whereas on a machine without an arm, you have to flip the bag inside out, make sure it doesn't get in the way, all that kind of stuff. And so it actually adds quite a bit of product range. The reason why we still run both is that I personally think it's much easier to sew shirts and jackets on the small machines. I think it's much easier to get it straight and I think it's much easier just workflow wise. It could be because that is what I'm used to. That's what I started on. And so basically, the long story long is that if you are someone that is planning on doing like a lot of accessories, like I could just run you through what we make on our big machines. So like laptop cases, tote bags, wallets, um, we make the collar monograms on them because that's really, really easy. If you are the type of person, but you could easily do that on a small machine. We just have the big machine, so we use them. Um, and the small machines are always in use, so it would be a little bit of a pain to have to do it. But um, to ha like the big machines are relatively more, more open than the small machines are usually for us. Um, but if you are someone that's going to be selling a lot of bags or doing a lot of accessories, you might want to jump into the investment of a big machine. If you are someone that's going to be mostly doing just like left chest pocket designs on shirts and jackets and really just anything that someone would wear on the top half of them, um, you will probably be very, very fine with a household machine without an arm and they are literally like a fifth of the price. So um, I do recommend that. We still use them regularly. All the Sherpas that we show sew in the shop and ship out are made with small machines. Okay, so what are the price ranges for each? These small machines, I'm actually just gonna tell you guys what I've paid um, for them. I've, I have quite a range, like, cause like I said, I have a relationship with my sewing machine guy, and so if he has ones that he's clearing off or ones that he's bought from customers or whatever, he'll call me and say, hey, I, I have one of your machines for X amount of dollars. If you want to, um, if you want it, you can have it. I'll hold it for you and you can get it, but you have to get it today. And so that's actually how we accumulated probably like, six of our machines was my sewing machine guy called me and said, hey, I have a machine that's cheaper than I would normally sell it. Um, and you can get it for X, for a number of reasons, like either brothers discontinuing this particular, this particular like software set of that machine or whatever. Um, and I have one left and 
you can have it if you not have it obviously but you can buy it um just because i'm trying to close out and so that is some of the reasons why like several of the reasons several of our machines that we have have come from things like that just opportunities of like hey if you want to if you want this it's yours type of deal um and so i would say the lower range of what you could get a small machine for would be like 600 dollars, and that would probably be looking at like used or one that's about to be discontinued something that's kind of more or less a fluke um and the upper end of what you would pay for a small machine that design that so is like up to a five by seven um area maybe you could get six by eight would be like thirteen hundred dollars probably around like eleven hundred dollars and that would just be one with like a more beefy computer system in it um and maybe a larger hoop area all those sorts of things um so we have two different types of small machines right now they use the same exact hoops um, but it's just that brother discontinued the our old model that we have been using since the beginning and replaced it with a new model and we have one of the new model machines the big machines that you that we use, we use a Brother Persona PRS 100. It's like I said, it's a single needle machine with an arm. We do really like them. I get a lot of questions about it when people like, when I share vlogs, people are like, do you like your PRS 100? We do like them a lot. Um, we just still use our small machines more just because of our product offering, but we really like our big machines. We have three of them and we, um, I don't remember what we've paid for all of them, but I would think that you would, probably be able to get one between the range of like three thousand and eight thousand dollars three thousand again would be used um i don't think we've ever gotten one that cheap and eight thousand dollars would probably be brand new maybe maybe like a newer model that brother's offering whatever i don't even know if they still sell those to be honest with you um but i mean i'm sure they do my my guy would have told me if they didn't but i'm <laughs> like certainly and then one thing i am going to note to you guys is that we use our prs 100 exclusively with fast frames and that set is 300 dollars um but we don't use any of the regular hoops that they come with so we exclusively i have never not used a fast frame on those machines so we use fast frames if you are like what are they if you're looking into it just google it it's basically a way to hoop stuff quicker it's hard to explain and this is not an embroidery tutorial video so just google fast frames and you'll be like oh, okay that's what it is um so just i have to lump that into my machine cost though because it is 300 dollars and it's basically useless to me without it and so we use them all with fast frames if you were wondering if I would change anything about the way that I bought my machines, the way that I accumulated my machines, the answer is honestly no. Uh, looking back, I would do the exact same thing that I did, which was just save up. We paid for all of our machines in cash um, at the time that we bought them. We just had the cash to have to buy them, and so we've never had to have a loan on them, um, and that is just extremely beneficial. My husband and I are pretty debt averse, though I have not bought a machine since my husband and I have even been married. but. Um, I've always been pretty debt averse. And so just to be able to accumulate the products or I guess equipment necessary to run my business and pay all cash has been really helpful. Um, and I would definitely do that again. I'd start with one, then add two, then add, I think then I added a big machine and then I added the third small machine and then fourth small machine, second big machine, fifth small machine, third big machine, that sort of thing. And we just paid for cash, pay with them, with cash as we went along and I would definitely do the same thing looking back. So like I said, that is most of the cost that you're gonna have is investing up in upfront in your equipment. You will have a few more costs when it comes to embroidery. Um, one thing is, I'm just gonna look at my notes, you will need hoops. Um, I really recommend having extra hoops. This is something I learned very quickly in my embroidery journey, especially if you are someone that will not be sewing on a single needle with an arm or a machine with an arm. If you're gonna be sewing on one of the smallest, the cheapest, machines you will want to be able to line up hoops as the next machine is so as the machine is sewing you'll, 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 you'll want to be able to hoop another garment so that you can keep the machine sewing the whole time which is what we do here um, we buy a fresh set of hoops like every year or at least we try to and I think we get our hoops for $20 on Amazon we use almost exclusively the four by four size hoop. Um, so we use the four by four size hoop and you can get those for like 20 bucks on Amazon a piece. And we buy a new set like every year. If you are not doing as much as we're doing, you definitely wouldn't need a new set every year. They do have like a little bit of a life to them. Like you can't use them forever and ever and ever cause they get um, like lopsided, they get bent, whatever. And then when we have a bad one, we just pitch it and order a new one. Um, and I would say that if, you were sewing at like a high volume, they last about a year. Um, okay, 
The next thing you will need is thread. I do not recommend skimping on thread. Do not try and save money on thread. You can tell the difference. Um, it, you can literally tell the difference. Like I can tell the difference when I pick up a spool of thread, if it's good or not. We use and have always used and will not change. We have always used isocord thread and we pay $14. Let me double check that roughly $14 on a 5,000 meter spool, which is the big spool, um, which you need a thread stand for, which is also, you just buy that one time. It's not a big deal. It's like 10 bucks, but do not skimp on the thread. They run through your machine worse. They sew worse. Everything about cheap thread is worse. And to be honest with you, it's like thread lasts so long that it's not worth cutting the cost for. And we really, really like Isocord thread. And so if you're looking for a thread recommendation, I definitely recommend Isocord. We use it, we won't change. The next thing you will definitely need is stabilizer. This is so dependent on what you're sewing and whether you need tear away, cut away, sticky, medium, heavy, yada, yada, yada. You just buy it by the roll. It's not even worth trying to give you guys like a ballpark price because it is so dependent on the roll size you buy. We buy ours from our wholesaler, um, Alpha Broder. You can also get it on Amazon. You can buy it from your local sewing machine shop, but we buy ours in a really big roll from our wholesaler. Other than that, you'll need some tools like needles and such things like that, but those are so low cost. Um, so that is about it. Your biggest cost is definitely your machine. And then obviously you have other business costs. Like you will need to start with a few sample garments to photograph them and list them. Um, and so don't, don't stock up on a bajillion shirts. I made that mistake. Don't do that. Just so one, sew them made to order. If you're doing a business like ours, just order it whenever your people order. And then you will also have listing and website fees. But like I said, the biggest bulk of your cost is going to come from your machine. So I hope that you have a better understanding of what machine you might want for your business, what you might need. Find a local sewing shop, go talk to the guy there, see what they have. Um, and yeah, that would be really, really beneficial. That's what I did. And that's what I still do. Okay, so that is basically everything I have to say about starting a home embroidery business. I hope this video was helpful. We talk about Etsy strategy. Obviously, we talk about embroidery sometimes because that's what I'm familiar with. So if that is what you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and hang out with me here. Um, if you have any more questions about embroidery machines, I will do my best to answer them in the comments. So just feel free to leave a comment. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys again soon.